In simple terms, the one arm pull up is a very complicated coordination movement. And by breaking it down into its component parts, we lower the level of coordination and therefore increase the amount of muscle recruitment that we can have by performing the exercises. Hi YouTube, my name is Loy and today I'm going to be teaching you my method for gaining strength in the one arm pull up. I am one of Canada's strongest climbing pulling athletes, but that wasn't always the case. Once upon a time, I also got my first one arm pull up and today I hope to share secrets with you so that you can get yours. There are a lot of tutorials on how to get a one arm pull up on YouTube, but I think all of them miss the mark. First, by neglecting one of the most important aspects of the one arm pull up, and secondly, by treating the one arm pull up as one movement, when in reality, it's more like two movements. And so, I'll be breaking that down for you so that you can have a better understanding of the mechanics of the one arm pull up and how to train it properly. So the first thing that I think most tutorials completely ignore is the importance of stability in the one arm pull up exercise. This leads to prescribing exercises such as band assisted one arm pull ups, which not only is not good for progressively overloading, but also completely neglects the stability portion of the one arm pull up. Without stable shoulders, the one arm pull up is much more difficult. And so let me give you an example. When most people go up to the bar and grab it with one arm, they will tend to use their wrist to stabilize. By moving your wrist left and right, you can counter the rotational movement of your body. But by using your wrist to stabilize, you're neglecting the stabilization of your shoulder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me demonstrate. If you grab the bar with one arm, you can hang low on it and stabilize using your wrist. But if I tell you to take the bar with only three fingers and hang, unless you've done stability work before, the majority of people will start spinning around uncontrollably. This is because they don't have the mind-muscle connection to their shoulder to help stabilize them, and they don't have the coordination or strength to be able to actually physically stabilize. This exercise will help completely fix that. So you wanna grab the bar with three fingers. If you can't do that, then four fingers is all right. Basically, grabbing with three fingers completely negates the movement of the wrist. So if you grab it with more fingers because you're not strong enough to hold the bar with that many digits, then just be very mindful to not use your wrist to stabilize. From there, you want to hang. And if you're not strong enough yet, you'll start spinning around uncontrollably. The goal here is to just try to control it as much as possible. And after a couple sessions, you'll soon begin to have control over your shoulder. This happens very rapidly because most people are strong enough to do it. It's just that they have never done it and lack the coordination to do it. So you're really learning a movement here. You're not really getting stronger yet, uh, which comes with most exercises that you're just learning for the first time. Once you have control, this is the exercise that I want you to do. You wanna grab the bar, hang, face forward, flat for say three to five seconds, turn, 45 degrees, three to five seconds. Turn with your shoulder again, 90 degrees, and then go back, and then go back, and then even go this way. So you just wanna keep spinning and stopping yourself with just your shoulder. This should completely solve all of your stability issues fairly quickly. After that, you can start loading the exercise. You can just grab a weight in your hand and do the exact same thing with weight. It'll make it much more difficult for your shoulder to stabilize. But of course, this is progressive overload, so that's exactly what you wanna do. I haven't talked about the reason why stability is so important. It's mostly because once you start engaging in the one-arm pull-up, if you don't have stability, you'll start twisting uncontrollably. And this can make it very difficult for you to finish the one arm pull up, the end portion. Because you'll start to spin all the way to the right and you won't be able to straighten out. You'll see this often with people who get their first one arm pull up, but it's actually a one arm chin up because they start twisting so much that they twist all the way around. So you wanna avoid that so you can actually do a one arm pull up. Okay, moving on to the second point. 
Most of the tutorials on YouTube take the one-arm pull-up as one swift movement, when I see it more as two completely separate movements. So the first movement is the scapular shrug, or raise, or this movement. And uh, the second portion is this ending portion with the bicep. It's really obvious that there's two different movements in the one-arm pull-up because most athletes will be weaker in one of them. So either athletes will struggle with the end portion because their bicep isn't strong enough, or they'll struggle with the first position because their shoulder isn't strong enough. By treating them as two different exercises, we can progressively overload them individually and make quicker progress than if we treated it wholly as one. Going back to the example of the banded one-arm pull-ups and why I don't like it is because it only progressively overloads your weakest link. Your stronger part will be underloaded and therefore you'll be losing out on gains. You can use this concept to break down almost any type of movement from a squat to a bench to climbing on the wall. Taking the movement and breaking it down into its constituent parts will help you solve the problem and actually find the root cause and not be distracted by other things. So let me show you the two exercises to, to strengthen the shoulder and strengthen the bicep. So my favorite exercise for strengthening the shoulder are scapula shrugs, one-armed scapula shrugs. This is a very tricky exercise because there is a lot happening in this entire shoulder complex. Um, you'll notice that there's pectoral activation, lat activation, shoulder activation, and a little bit of bicep once you get to that point. So you wanna be mindful of all of these things and really creating that connection between your entire shoulder complex. So you just wanna grab the bar. As a climber, I like to face completely flat on the wall. Uh, I mean, completely parallel with the bar. But if you're not a climber, then a 45 degree angle from the bar is completely fine. So you'll just hang from the bar, hang for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then you'll engage. One, two, three, four, five and then back down, and that's it. This exercise can be progressively overloaded very well. So I've I built mine up to over 100 pounds, and the strength that I've gained in this shoulder is very, very amazing. And it's also helped with some past injuries as well. So this is a great shoulder exercise to add into your, your routine. To load it, you just grab a dumbbell and hold it and do the same thing. That exercise will be treating uh, max exertion which sometimes isn't always the best so you want to also build some like you also want to do some volume just to reinforce those motor patterns and so just doing it weightless after you've developed enough strength to comfortably do it doing it weightless and doing a couple reps is pretty helpful to also just warm up the shoulder so you just grab it and just go And that feels pretty good. Warms up the whole complex so that you can start uh, doing one-arm pull-ups. The next one is for the bicep. And the best bicep exercise, in my opinion, is the chin-up. This is interesting because you hear one-arm pull-up, so you, should, you think you should do pull-ups, but pull-ups are almost negligible when it comes to one-arm pull-up strength. I think it's, it's much more lat-focused and because of that, it doesn't translate directly to the one arm pull-up, but the chin-up, it does. Basically, a compound movement for your biceps. So, standard chin-up, shoulder width apart, and then pull, pull. And uh, that exercise can be loaded with a weight belt. It's a very simple exercise, a lot of people do it. Um, but not a lot of people focus on it for the one-arm pull-up, even though I think it's very, very important. Once you put all of that together, you should be able to do a one-arm pull-up because you have all the parts, you have all the puzzle pieces to be able to do a one-arm pull-up. The reason why I think this method is much better than all the other tutorials is because it is actually very approachable for all levels of athleticism. Instead of taking the one-arm pull-up as a whole movement 
and lowering the load, which I find messes up with the stability and uh, doesn't fully load all the portions. In this method, you can take down the notch of each component exercise, which in itself is much more valuable and much more simple to implement. Let me show you a couple of regressions so that even if you can't do these exercises, you can still begin to learn the one-arm pull-up. For stability, it will look basically the same. You will just, just hang, dead hanging from the bar will be very, very helpful for you. It's really important to not use bands with this exercise because it almost completely defeats the point of the stability component. So you can use your wrist to help keep yourself mildly on track, but just be mindful that you really want to engage that shoulder and use it to stabilize. And if you're really new to this exercise, then you'll be using your wrist more and more. But as time goes on, you wanna use less of your wrist and start moving onto your shoulder. The regression for the scat pulls, one-arm scat pulls, would be to use a band. In this case, it would be completely fine because we've already trained the stability portion of the one-arm pull-up. And so we can use a band like this, place it around the bar, place a knee into it, Grab the bar and do your scat pulls. And then you can do the exact same regression for the chin-ups using a band. Place a knee or both knees or a foot. Grab the bar, shoulder width apart and do the exercise. You'll see that all the regressions look exactly like the exercise, but it's much more controllable. Um, you'll notice that if you use a band for a one-arm pull-up regression, you'll see people all the time going around in circles, having really bad form, and that's not very useful to when you're trying to actively, progressively overload the one-arm pull-up. In simple terms, the one-arm pull-up is a very complicated, coordination movement. And by breaking it down into its component parts, we lower the level of coordination and therefore increase the amount of muscle recruitment that we can have by performing the exercises. Now, a one-arm pull-up video wouldn't be done without doing a one-arm pull-up. So, I'll do one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this really helped you and I hope that you can achieve your one-arm pull-up. Until next time, see you guys later.